Jennifer. Richard. How are you? Just going, going with the flow, but fabulous. <laughs> Healthy. You know, I feel good. I couldn't, I mean, I feel great. So I feel very fortunate. Just a little bit, I've called myself a Magoo probably one too many times. Maybe my mind is starting to believe it. A Magoo? Is a Magoo like somebody who's completely discombobulated? <laughs> kind of, yeah. Have, I'm having a very challenging time focusing. It takes way more effort than it used to. I'm sorry, what were you talking about? No, just kidding. <laughs> It's a joke. <laughs> uh, no, I think we're all we're all feeling that it's all discombobulated, as they say. Um, I don't know, Mercury retrograde, uh, retrograde. Well, we had that huge solar thing that happened this morning or yesterday. Oh, I missed that, or maybe I didn't. We maybe. weren't able to see it from where we're at, but oh yeah, and there was, was a an eclipse, I think, this morning, wasn't it? There was, and so that I don't like to chalk it up to that, but. I'm telling you, it hasn't been this difficult to like focus. focus. Yeah. I'm not drinking coffee. That might have something to do with it either, too. Cool. Well, how about them on the flip side? Do they get affected by what's going on here? Obviously not. Um, but let's ask Lou, our, our buddy Luana, who's on the flip side with her clipboard, standing by with someone to chat with us. Yeah, there we go. That's Jennifer's clipboard. Luana's clipboard. Got a few, maybe not, we don't know. Is it empty or Lou? Well, who do you want to talk to? Or what do you want to talk about? Bring it, bring it forward. I don't know who he is. It feels like that she's telling me it's a producer that I don't recognize. Okay. And I'm like, and then I got, I felt the emotions, that, I felt the emotion of um, your week last week with Hot Lips, right? Sally, and yeah, Sally Keller. Sorry. It's all right. <laughs> Morton, hot lift. Yeah. Um, this one's connected to Amelia Earhart. Okay. Uh, is it somebody that we've spoken to before? No. No. Okay. And and is this somebody I have to ask a, you know, so Lou, this is someone that has lobbied through you to speak to us. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, and uh, let's let's have him take a seat. Uh, first, we can say welcome to our class. I mean, he should, I know that um, I felt the word Fred, but it's not Fred. Okay, and so let's ask Actually, Luana. I think, it, I think it is Fred. It's a guy named Fred. Guy named Fred. Mm -hmm. Oh well, let's ask Luana. Is this person associated with? Uh, films that you made, Luana, is this person associated? Yeah. Okay. And is this, and his name is, his name is Fred or is he associated with, associated with Luana's friend, Fred, who's over here on this side? Over here. So it's associated with the guy that's over here. Okay. So this person that's going to, wants to talk to us is somebody who is aware of Luana's friend, Fred somebody I know named Fred, who is a film producer. Is that correct? Yeah, okay. That's correct. All right. Well, let's start with content because this is a show. This is a show. This is a podcast about process. And, and, you know, as we figure out who this is, who wants to speak to or about the person named Fred, let me ask you some questions. Are you, is it that you want to pass a message to this guy, Fred, or, or is it that, you want to just say something to our class no, in general. He wants, he wants you to interview him. She wants oh, you to interview him. Okay, very good. All right, so you're gonna we're, so we're gonna have to fish around a little bit so I can get a handle on who you are. Let Tell me, me ask you. <laughs> let me ask you. Um, have you have you produced any film? Or so am I? He correct? just showed me the number three. So, and he just showed me. Uh, um. Uh, Cameron. Jim Cameron. Uh, Jim okay. Cameron. And, um, and, it, and it felt like the Titanic. Okay. Then, um, this is Billy. I'm going to kill them over there. <laughs> well, Billy can help us with this. If this is somebody who's worked with Jim Cameron, or is this someone who has, has uh, is this somebody who's worked with Jim Cameron before, or has worked with Bill before? 
No, it's someone that they made movies about or he was in. Okay, someone they made movies about or that he was in. Mm -hmm. We, um, uh, so, but Billy, have you ever worked with this guy? Luana, have you worked with this guy? We got a long list of people to ask. No, they haven't oh, worked with him. But let's ask him, who has he worked with in our class that we would Amelia. recognize? Amelia. Oh, okay, all right, all right. Let me ask you this, are you, are you a producer who was going to make a movie with Amelia Earhart but did not? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, I'm going to ask you, a, I'm just going to go right to the heart of the matter. Are you Carl Lemley? Yes. <laughs> okay. Jennifer doesn't know who that is. I do. She knows the name Lemley because it's a common name for a movie theater here in Los Angeles, but she doesn't know who Carl Lemley is. Oh, okay. Well, this is very interesting, Carl. Is that your name? You're Carl. Is that correct? Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. All right. So I've never seen him before, so I don't know if what was the whole Fred. That's all right. You don't you don't have to you know, we'll we'll get to the heart of it. We'll figure out what it is he wants to say. First of all, thank you for coming forward to talk to us. I know who you are, sir. You had a very uh, strong and very powerful journey in your life as a film producer, even though in this era we're not aware of you. Um, you know, let's just say, you know, to be fair. The uh, most yeah, of the it's audience. It's funny because he was showing me being on a wave runner. I'm like, what? He goes, it was a fun ride. <laughs> it was a fun ride, and I I will say, you were very successful, uh, and you were the head of a studio. And at some point, you wanted to make a film with Amelia Earhart, and you right. told you told her, and this is a, I'm aware through my research, uh, that that you know it, the time was right before her last flight to make a film about her life or, or something. And I know that Amelia wrote a screenplay along with Mary Pickford and the two of you all were talking about making this film together. Is that correct? You said Mary, it's funny because you said Mary Pickford. Mary what Pickford. I, and I got Mary Poppins at the same time. So that was funny. <laughs> Mary Poppins, okay. Well, yeah, that funny. would be another way. Well, what do you want to tell us, sir? I mean, other than identifying who you are and I'll put that in the uh the description because he's like i want you to interview me i'm like i don't understand this is okay well let's let's ask you uh, carl uh first things first so who was there to greet you when you cross over or what was the process like okay why are you talking to that guy he's talking to the guy that or the guy that shot the that not filmed not shot filmed the elephants in africa oh Peter, Peter, Peter Beard. We yeah. talked to Peter Beard. I know. So he's talking to, I don't know what he, so when you asked him who, who greeted you, I know Peter didn't, obviously, but. Um, but someone like Peter. Some, some like an adventurer. Or it could be just the name Peter. Okay. Oh, somebody uh, named Peter. Okay, very good. All right, it. well, you know, Carl, I gotta, you gotta give me a little bit of a break here, bro. No, no, I mean, it's not Jennifer's fault. Um, normally, if I'm going to interview somebody, I do like a little bit of a research based on it. I know a little bit about Carl, but enough to know that you passed away. Do you want to give Jennifer a, an idea when you passed away? She doesn't have to be exact or accurate. It's news to her. 1964 or 68? Yeah, a little bit earlier. Okay. If this is... If, he, showed me, he showed me 1908, and I'm like, no way. Okay, well, that's get that's closer. Uh, okay. then, no, that was the height of his active years, his career. He passed away in thirty nine. Okay, so how many years ago was that? Man, a while ago. You know, there are, he's outside of time. Mike, and Mike, is it sixty eight years ago? Is that why you gave that to me? Oh, I see. It's, it's okay. You know what, Jennifer and I, you and I, do not have to prove. We're not trying to prove anything because we've done it so many times before. After doing this for five or six years, when you knock it out of the park, you really knock it out of the park. Carl, and if he's, and we've, you know, let's establish that I know who Carl Lemley is, but you want to talk about your journey. So talk, tell us a little about who, 
Why did you choose to be Carl Lemley? He's mentioning, and he's mentioning 73, so I don't know if he died when he was 73. Those numbers. Uh, let's see. He, it, he lived from uh, 1867 to 1972. Oh. Correct. Very good. All right. Thanks. So, uh, you know, Carl, we love you, but we know Amelia a little bit better. Can she come in and talk on your behalf? She's right there. Okay, yeah. so Amelia, if you don't mind, can I turn to you for a second? She's What's laughing. up? She told him it wouldn't work. She's like, it wouldn't work. He wanted to test No, it. no, it'll yeah. work. It'll no, work. No, I, I know just... it's going to work, but I think it's funny because I'm hearing her go, I told you it wasn't going to work the way you were trying <laughs> to do it. way too long. But it, it's a process that he wanted to understand a little bit more. Well, and, and let's, uh, let's allow for a second. The only reason I know that this is Carl Lemley is because I've written extensively about Amelia. For fans of our work, they know that I spent 30 years researching her life. Right. The fact that she wrote a script with Mary Pickford is not well known, but it is in the book that her- He said he, said he glossed over it. So Every, the, everybody did. Everybody glossed over it. No, you, only way to f he, he's like, if I knew then what I know now, obviously I would have done something about you it. You would have done something. Yeah. And and, and she it also this, wouldn't have correctly portrayed her story. Her story, which would yeah. have a lot of people, he says. No, so and it was appropriate that it wasn't produced. Right. And also because they, Mary and Amelia wrote a story that was a scenario about women in, about women in flight. And it wasn't the Amelia story. And what Carl's saying is that her story, as dramatic as it is, he could have told it in a dramatic fashion. Right. Why, why did you choose this life as Carl as a storyteller? Did you feel like your, your work could help people or heal people? I love movies. Ever, during the Depression, which happened three times, he says, in his life, he says he, he just remembers the smell, like the popcorn when he was little, like how important the popcorn was, right? And just the community of, of being a family and friends watching it, as well as the community of actors that the small group of actors that st stood by each other and stayed together, you know? And then he just showed me, he just showed me, um, oh my gosh, Blue Eyes, what is her name? Uh, I think you would know who she was. She had the first perfume line, Sapphire, I think. Um, Chanel or? No. Why did you love Chanel? No, it was, um, I'll think, of Elizabeth Taylor, excuse me. Oh, Elizabeth Taylor, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah those very unusual eyes, purple eyes, I think. Yeah. Um, but, and let me ask you about this, Carl. Your son, uh, Carl Jr., created a movie theater here in Los Angeles. He's pa he passed away in 1979. What was that like for you to see your son when he came over to the flip side? So it was exciting. He's like, we both did it. He like handed, like he went and just, you know, high-fived him. Um, and he said, there's a lot of things they had to go through because, hold on. Instantly, by the way, he's like, instantly, you know what your places are in the play. Um, I felt we were successful in bringing people together in unity. Keeps and now, uh, tell me a little bit, I'm sorry to interrupt, but, t but tell me a little bit about your relationship with Luana. How did you get Luana to put you on her list today? Amelia. Through Amelia. And Amelia, it, just let's turn to you for a second. What and Luana is knew of him. Luana's like, I knew, of, you know, I know him. Yeah. I knew of him. But, I, you know, I knew his son, it felt like. Anyways, well, and Luana would be aware that I wouldn't really know that much about him, other than this one detail that George Putnam, Amelia's husband, excerpted the screenplay she wrote in a book that he wrote after she passed away. So, on that note, because I kept feeling her, was her husband named Fred? Uh, the man that loved her, or the co-pilot? Oh, yeah, 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 the, the navigator. I think that's part of it. That's too. the Fred, okay. All right, well, that's true. Um, yeah, her navigator, 
who also I'm, passed I'm away. Talking to, I'm, I'm talking to Amelia going, I'm pretty sure I know who you are. You just had to show up <laughs> like that, like versus going through, well, your husband's name is Fred. And well, Fred. let's give the audience a glimpse. What is, what's Amelia wearing? If, when I ask you that question, what comes to mind? She has like a white shirt, a white collared shirt, like a, not a polo shirt, but like an Oxford shirt buttoned down with blue jeans and like just regular tennies. Okay, and uh, how about Carl? When I ask that question, what does he appear? He's in a suit. Young, old? Forties, mm, fifties. Okay. Before and he lost all his hair, he says, or something like that. Before he lost all his hair. And what's your impression of our classroom, Carl? Very fascinating. And you, wait, hold on. If you think ahead, about sorry. it, movies are made in this way. You get ideas from the ethers, and so it comes down. So it, it's, um, show me again. It's the unity of being able to exchange. Only the difference is, is you guys know that there's an exchange where people are, thank you, people are just walking around thinking that they are thinking everything versus having, you know, people helping them. Everyone needs to know that there's help. From the other side is what he, and he says that your class brings that up over and over and over again very eloquently put everyone needs to know that they have help on the other side and hope and hope beautifully and hope. said and uh so carl what are you doing over there what are do you how do you entertain yourself designing movie theaters that's funny um <laughs> i'm learning how to cook because there's, I'm learning different flavors that I didn't experience when I was here on this earth. Like what? Cooking? Like Indian spices, like all sorts of different flavors. He's just showing me like where he didn't, you know, where we have it here now, but he didn't have it at the time. And if you could just talk a little bit about the process, how does one over there create a sensation? So he says, he goes, you go pick out a book and you read it like a recipe, only it's with she, he goes, it's a lot more, wow. It's a lot more, uh, how do you want to say it? He's showing me how he builds the kitchen to whatever he needs to do. He gets the staff or whatever, you know, people that have more knowledge. Either it's a group effort to build it. So it's like, okay, that's <laughs> so funny. He's like, if you build your own restaurant up here, he's like, okay, Indian food, you know, people, the, people can actually come and congregate and put in their two cents or spices or whatever wow. it is and help out the process. Like he's like, even down in the oven, like what oven is, what oven is appropriate for which type of food? Wow. You mean like, especially with Indian food, because they use different onion, salt. ovens. Salt. Yeah. That's what he said. He, I didn't know that, but he said the salt is super important because there's so many different types of salts all around the world and the textures. And he's like, you can pick out a salt from Morocco and it's so different than a salt from India. Wow. You know? I mean, I know that's true, but to think that on the flip side, they would be able to that's taste. So fun and entertaining. You know, so there's no time over here. It's super fun to figure out where to take it, like take the, the earth, you know, when it first started being inhabited to like recreating the, the, the food that hasn't been processed, but in a kitchen that's the year 2050, 2050, you know, state of the art kitchen that's in the future that we don't have access to just yet, but taking everything that's, you know, recreating things that were from here on the planet from the beginning. Thank you. Wow, <laughs> it's a fascinating idea. What was it like for you to run into Amelia once you got to the other side? If that was important, yeah. I don't know. Oh, oh, she she was there greeting me, one of many. Why are you showing me that again? Where? He said he had a soft landing, so he keeps showing me Africa. All right, oh, I see, so like the Peter Beard African thing. So. Did yeah. you go on safari? Is that what happened, Carl, in your life? I was on a plane. Amelia was flying and we were, and she was making me feel like it was for filming. Wow. Like, like a location, like being a location scout. And we picked Africa because 
I was familiar with the background. Right. And so that was their soft landing, which is, mm -hmm. you know, a pun, but that idea yeah, of so the plane didn't land and she turned into a spaceship. <laughs> <laughs> but that idea of like, you're on the flip side and you're trying to figure out where am I? And now you realize, oh, I'm being flown by Amelia Earhart. How cool is that? Right. And then seeing Africa and, and, and to give you that. Well, met right. He said, he goes, what changes when she told me to take over? He goes, oh, That's what you, you fly the plane. That's you wild. Well, and then also she, to give Jennifer Peter Beard's image, the idea of somebody who spent most of his life in Africa filming and shooting and, you know, seeing Af elephants and stuff like that. That idea that that's a way of communication. You know, right. if, if we didn't know Jennifer, or I, we didn't know each other, you know, she would say, oh, Peter Beard, and I, we would go off on a different tangent. But this is a way to allow him to tell his story, which is, was a soft landing on the other side. Are you planning on coming back soon, Carl, or what's going on? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having too much fun over here. Why would I want to go there and deal with disease and bad hearts? And he goes, I, will. He goes I will eventually. He goes, because I want to feel instead of creating the feeling. Over there, you create the feeling. Brilliantly here, said. Here, you get to feel it. And he goes, I'm okay with being okay not feeling it right now. I, I, and I want to repeat that. Uh, the idea of feeling and creating feeling, two different things. Because mentally we can create anything, any, any as, as a construct, but actually doing it, like, you know, skydiving. We can talk about it, we can think about it, but doing I it, it. you've done it, you, you're going to have to, I'll have to be on the flip side to do it. <laughs> I could take my son to go skydiving. So Fred Noonan, uh, let's, I just wanted to shout out to Fred Noonan because she put Fred, the word Fred, in there. And that was also a way for us to find this thread so we can get to Carl Lemley it's of all still laughing. It still took too long. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you Not can like, always. But it was, I'm still fascinated by it because I was about ready to like, I'm like, oh, man. No, no, the two, the two of us. And who's to say that we're going to get to where we want to go? But. The things that you said, because, oh, go ahead. Thank you for the happy birthday. Oh, he, that's sweet. He, he, Prince, oh. high five. It's his birthday. What were you, I six? I looked at that picture, 68? 60, 60, whatever. Well, right. maybe he was older and said he was 63. I don't know. <laughs> that um, happens. He's laughing. But he said, he goes, no, I only lied about my height. <laughs> <laughs> but, he said that he was watching because I was like, oh, such a beautiful, that picture was his essence, the one that I showed, you know. The, yeah, you uh, sent me a photograph of him looking. Um, and it, he just said, he said, I saw you do it because I was watching over. That's just so funny because I just had, a, oh, that's right. What? And then put that song, Purple Rain, in my head. And I didn't even correlate it. And he's like, you weren't even paying attention. But I couldn't get that song. It was a loop in my head. That's just so funny. I, well, you know, listen, the guy owns a color now. And so whenever I see his color on television or an actor, an actor was wearing a, his color yesterday. And I was thinking to myself, oh, yeah, there's that color, Prince, <laughs> which, is, which is he owns the color. But that idea, look, it was this podcast about process. Oh my gosh, he just showed me my Nikes. Purple was my favorite color. I had, I had when I was young, you were able to get the Nikes and you were able to get the ones that have, you know, the Nike with the color. So yeah. were, I only wanted purple and I had to save up my money to get the white Nikes with the purple stripe. Because I was, oh, and then I just got shown Donny Osmond and the purple socks. That's hilarious. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. That I, know I'm not, I know I'm not thinking it, so it's- impressive. Yeah, yeah, so they pop in. He's giving was, you all the examples of purple. I was in the fourth grade with wearing dittos or Calvin Klein's or something like that. That was a big deal. So listen, Carl, just hold this thought for a second. Prince, your birthday was this week. People all over the world send out messages of love and remembrance to you. What do you want to say to him? We had a huge party. We listened to it. We partied like it was 1999. Everybody had to dress a certain way. <laughs> How are you kidding. dressed? He just was kidding about that. He said, 
I was taller than all of them. I walked in there. He made himself super tall. Like, a, you can do that? That is so cool. So he made himself like a monster, like a tall woman. <laughs> People were like, you know, that show up their normal height were like this. Yeah. And he's showing me just walking into the arena. And wow. everyone was laughing because the second they saw him, even though it was his birthday, he's like, everybody had to compete and started getting taller. He goes, then it was <laughs> ruin the ruin the construct of the arena. That's so cool. That was really cool. Prince, you were a great basketball player. I know that a lot of people, you know, found your skills to be extraordinary. I know you played in college. Are you still playing over there? He said, it helped me with my mind. Keeping my hands busy helped me, helped me settle my mind. So either he had ADD or, hello. Um, and getting into music also settled my mind. I always had to have something going on because it was too painful when it was quiet. Random question, Prince. Have you run into Ludwig over there? Is that Beethoven? Are you sharing Beethoven? Yeah. And what's your impression of him? He just showed me him and Beethoven going like this and then separating. So they're the same. He's, I'm like, are you the same? You know, is he part, he goes, yeah, but I'm the modernized version of him. So like the same frequency. Mm -hmm. And what was your, I mean, and, running. And then, he went, and then he went like this, he's a little crazy. He was a little crazy. I was just reading his life story this and morning. He me hanging out with Vince. Vincent, I'm sorry, Vincent Van Gogh. Oh, Van Gogh, another, <laughs> another a little crazy he goes, guy. There are two peas in a pod. He goes, they're fun. He goes, and they're geniuses. He goes, well, they're genius that there's a reason why they snapped at different times he goes Prince, that do you want to bring your friend vincent in no because he doesn't want him in the same space <laughs> too too big a star what about ludwig ludwig or, or vincent either one of them carl i hope you don't mind i think i'm they're there like, when okay. you, like so let's ask vincent we've never interviewed you before sir what was it like for you when you crossed over Hell, I thought I was going, I thought Satan was taking me. Oh, mind, so that was your mind, initial thought. My mind was, I felt like I did so many things wrong in my life. So, but, but once you got over, once you, once you realized it was okay, at what point different. did that happen? When my mom grabbed my hand. Oh, very good. Okay. Then, was there something, did she die during childbirth or something like that? Do you know? I don't know. I don't know, but that the idea, don't forget, we have a higher self as well. So his mom could, you know, have been there for a while. And this, the suffering, I, I, you know, I, this, people are going to ask me about your ear. And I think it was in some kind of a fight or, you know, people thought you had cut it off yourself, but there is some. I was talking to Ludwig, not Vincent. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Ludwig, your mom was there. Okay. Very good. Yes. Your mom had passed away long time. Uh, let's, uh, and so Ludwig. Your Ill that's okay no it's my fault ludwig your 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 illness your lifelong illness that you had yeah. stomach issues and then eventually that turned into deafness Have, was that something you charted it was, it was some he's like i would, didn't even want to come here <laughs> i was forced to and i made myself sick he's showing me gastritis or something like he had like the acid that would go through your body and he said then his anxiety made it even worse. And so it just perpetuated and he's like, it's like burning throughout your body. That's what it felt like to him. But at the same time, you were able to have this incredible uh, ability to create. You have that much pain, you leave your body. And that's what he did. So while you were, people would talk about you going out into the woods and writing on trees and just completely being, uh, he said that that's where he got his information. Oh my gosh, you're not showing me that, are you? <laughs> I just got shown Joseph Smith. Anyway. Oh. <laughs> he, um, probably him too. I, Carl, I'm sorry, Ludwig, I want to ask you about your son, Carl. You had a, a tempestuous relationship with Carl's mother, which was your sister-in-law. Carl was your nephew, but you adopted him. So, so who a, are we talking? We're talking to Beethoven. Ludwig. 
Yeah, Beethoven. His his nephew Carl was somebody that he adopted and made a big deal out of. Was that just part of your mania or what was going on there? I felt him struggling and I wanted to help. But I didn't know anything about being a parent or anything about anything. And he said, he goes, he suffered and I watched and I couldn't do anything. There was nothing well, helpful. You did make you did make his mother's life pretty miserable for about 10 years by going to court and winning. But now you're on the flip side. Now have you resolved all those issues with your sister-in-law, your brother, all these people that you fought in life? <laughs> He's like I couldn't see what was going on. He's laughing. It was but that that's a good that's question. I'm going to Go ahead. He, he couldn't see what was going on. He also, your senses get heightened and he could sense something was really off. He always felt like people were taking from him and he felt like he needed shelter. That That's person. true. That's true. That is true. His, his whole life was everybody's ripping me off. But he was the first indie composer, the first guy to actually break free of the system. Let me ask you, they called you the Spaniard. I know your roots were Dutch. Were you african or arabian or were your roots sort of more in africa he says he was a prince so i'm not sure i okay it does it doesn't matter actually there was a big issue with him because his name von beethoven in dutch it means family of but in germany at the time or in austria it meant royalty so that's are you, why he said prince. He's a that's prince. why he said prince. So you consider yourself a prince to this day, I would imagine. Absolutely. <laughs> so we asked you yes. before, because I've been editing Chills. your favorite symphony, sir, or favorite piece of music that you wrote. Was there something? I know this. I'm sorry. I'm, he just showed me E minor. Okay, we'll ask him to hold up his hands and pick one out of nine. Out of symphonies, one out of eight. nine. Eight. Eight. Okay, he told us the fifth before, and I just want to tell you that because it's all right. He can change his mind. Wait, no, no. What did he say before? E, e minor? Something in E minor. Okay, so A, B, C, D, E. Five. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to ask you about your symphonies, sir. One through nine. Symphony one, symphony two, symphony three. Symphony five, symphony I nine. I, no. <laughs> I know, but I'm gonna ask him, which is your favorite? It was five. Five, and he did say this, that five, if you listen to five, you can, everything that he had to say about music is in five. Yeah. But I wanna ask you about the, uh, specifically the opening. He was angry during eight. Said. Angry during eight? Okay. Well, nine was the one that's my favorite, but when you when you spoke of somebody asked you about the first four notes of five. It was a love story, by the way. Nine? Or eight? It was a love story or five. Yeah, no, seven like seven, like the ups and downs. So I'm seeing seven, eight, nine. Uh -huh. He said that there was love and then no love and then love again. So there that, was, that seems to be the story, his story, which is... Okay. So he said know, it was traumatic, but that's what creates great music. True. The first four notes of the fifth, somebody asked you what they meant. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. dun. Yeah. Hold on. And he had a couple of answers. And I want to just clarify one of them. What I feel like, and I don't want to get this wrong but i feel like he's showing me he's showing me somebody's legs like being stern like walking away so it felt like walking walking like walking away dun, 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 and then halting and then having somebody else it's like a dance it feels like a dance dun, 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 dun. okay some people thought that it was like fate knocking on your door dun 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 like, you know, but well, I was somebody walking towards it. So I well, believe what you're saying is right. 
I could be, but I'm just saying that some people said that. And and recently I was reading. Well, that's some, why you showed me somebody coming forward. So going like this and then like fate. Fate, fate is yeah. uh, at your door. But somebody asked you specifically, what does it mean? And you answered, you are so dumb. <laughs> Which in German, du bist ein dumm. Bum, 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 bum. You are so dumb. But and there, people thought, oh, he's so hostile. There was but, lots of, he's showing me propaganda. He's showing me things that. Oh, people made that stuff up. But the only reason I thought it was hilarious is because dumb also means deaf. So oh, the idea of you were going deaf and you knew you were going deaf at that time. And I thought, is he saying to the person who's asking the question, you're so deaf, you don't know what that means? Or I am going deaf. Like he's talking to himself. You are so dumb. Neither. I'm going deaf. I'm going deaf. Because everybody was dumb. <laughs> well, I know, listen, I know we're, we're rapid firing here, and I don't mean to do that to you. You know, we normally plan, but it just so happened I was reading his biography this morning and thinking about him and his journey and his path. And let's go back. Uh, Ludwig, you're always welcome here. Vincent, we'll talk to you in a, another time when you're like, we got a chance that we can have a long car conversation because we've never had that. He but, said an animal bit his ear off. Oh, is that right? Okay. I don't think, I mean. Well, nobody really knows. There was some talk of a kid that attacked him in the street and tried to rob him and he didn't want to, you know, that maybe he was in an alley with a, a lover and that person attacked him and he didn't want to finger the person. I don't know. It's, you know, it's, you know, he certainly had mental issues, obviously. Yeah, he said it was an animal. So whether that's a person that was an animal, I'm not sure. Okay, very good, Vincent. We appreciate that. Uh, anything, when you crossed over, when did you run into Paul Gauguin? Did you see Gauguin later on? Were you guys, did you reconcile? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. He's he's kidding, but he's just like hold on. It was immediate. It was immediate. It was immediate. Listen, but none he's of laughing though. You have to understand he's I wish you could see what he shows me in my head. He's like, Yeah, I'm circling the world trying to find him. And he keeps running away or whatever. <laughs> or, you know, that apparently like, was their relationship. Because he Vincent was kind of like a, a stan, you know, like a, a fangirl of Paul Gauguin. And they oh, lived yeah. together. Oh, that's yeah. so funny. They Paul's lived together and Paul finally left. Couldn't handle him anymore because he was too nutty, too clingy. But wow, with great art. So question for you, Vince. None of your paintings sold while you're alive. And now he you're the most. He was talking about it. He was just talking about it. He's just like, yeah, now they're worth something. He goes, how many hundreds of years did it take? <laughs> well, but, time is compressed, right? So, you know, did you true. plan that? Had you planned that out in advance, that lifetime, that way? Don't work? do artwork in the, hold on. You don't do artwork because it pays you. You do artwork because it's an outlet and you have passion. It's interpretation. I didn't care who interpreted that my paintings were like Starry Night. He goes, who gives a f? <laughs> he goes, yeah, well, also because they, they weren't, you weren't in that zeitgeist where they were trying to buy and sell. Whereas Ludwig, Beethoven was in that world because he had to create his success. And he did as a DIY artist because he was the first person to break free of all of the royalty and they and people flocked to you know he was the people's musician, so it's a wonderful thing to hear those guys. Yeah. Go ahead, and their frequency of art. What that like, is. All that matters now is that mine costs more to buy. <laughs> yeah, that's all that matters. I have the last laugh, literally. <laughs> and Carl, Amelia. Somebody should make a movie about her, don't you think? <laughs> well, 
for fans of this show, they know I've spent yeah. the past 30 years trying to make a film about her. She says it's still coming. It's still coming. All right. Well, that's Hope Springs Eternal. It may be that when I get on the flip side, everyone's there. Okay. And action. Doesn't Robert want to do that? Take people from the flip side and have... Yeah, that's right. That Right. And have the right scenes for them. No, but of course, that would be a really a nice culmination of, of a lot of work. And, you know, listen, Amelia has popped into my head in the past week, literally, you know, out of nowhere in the past couple of days. So I realize now that it was probably her, her way of saying we're going to be talking to Carl. They, just wanted, they wanted to do something different versus because they pop into your head, they're letting you see the process as well as myself because I wanted to give up. And they're like, just follow the thread, just follow the thread. And so it was a good exercise. We had someone that came in that I knew nothing about. It was connected to Amelia Earhart. It was everything that they said was pretty, it's pretty nutty between Prince, Ludwig, <laughs> Vincent Van Gogh. Vincent Van Gogh. And just all the thoughts. I mean, what Prince just told me about my purple Nikes, I'm like, that's right. And then my uncle Jack loved purple who passed away at 33 from cancer. And he loved purple, like everybody wore purple to his funeral. And I loved him so much, I named my son Jack after him. Hmm. And it was just, so all these things, like the whole purple thing, I know I'm not thinking anything. I couldn't remember that. I can't remember where I put my keys yesterday. <laughs> well, and that is about process. Right, that but is they're saying, so more of it is to allow. And then Carl came back in and he's just like, and the hope and the unity, again, know that we're here to help. We're here to give you hope. He goes, that's what he found fascinating with our classes. We know we're getting information from them. And he goes, we're constantly giving information and hints, just like they did this to us this week, right? Yeah, right. Constantly. Constantly. And, you know, people, I spend a certain part of every day on Quora, you know, mm -hmm. um, trying to help people to access loved ones on the other side, whether it's, you know, a close friend, a close relative, a child, mm -hmm. who are there, you know, distraught and beside themselves. And then I've also tried to help people who come at me with this, these kind of silly arguments that this all doesn't exist and you're, you're delusional. And I think to myself, you have a Carl on the other side who knows you, is tapping you on the shoulder and saying, go on to, you know, Martini's page of Hacking the Afterlife and bug him because he will show you the path to talk to me. So here we are doing this podcast talking to people we don't know I, I don't know Carl Emily from Adam it just so happens that I did enough research into Amelia's life that I know that she wrote a script and I know that Carl went to see her and Mary Pickford and Douglas Fairbanks her husband and at their house or I think they went to his office and he he pitched them and said Amelia you got to make a movie about yourself it's but it's got to be now while the strike while the iron is hot and they decided to write a screenplay together, Mary Pickford and Amelia. And I've read the script. You know, it's wonderful. But it's not her story. It's not this story. It's a and and to me to come out, which I thought was interesting. So right. I, have to it, I know you got to go. So, Carl, I just want to thank you for coming in. I really appreciate that. Amelia, thanks for bringing your buddy Carl in. Luana, thanks for putting him on the list. Prince, no mm -hmm. chopped liver there. And Ludwig and... Vincent, you guys are always welcome. We appreciate you stopping by our podcast to answer our goofy questions. <laughs> My dad's the one that he just popped in. He goes, I'm the one that fit the purple shoe. Ah, we love your dad, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Okay, everybody. We'll catch you on the flip side. We'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>